Next is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. First chapter, text number 26 and 27. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on July 21st, 1973, in London, England. Translation. There Arjuna could see, within the midst of the armies of both parties, his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, and also his father-in-law and well-wishers, all present there. When the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. <coughs> this is the problem. Now, Arjuna is facing the problem. What is this problem? Suppose you bring all my friends, my relatives, <coughs> my sons, grandsons, my father-in-law, brother-in-law, friends, my animals, because there are soldiers, Srinaya Rubhayarupi, there are animals also, horses, elephants, uh, they are also within the membership. According to uh, Vedic conception, the animals, they are also members of your family oh. because they are giving service. Not that one section of the members of my family I give protection and the other section I take everything from them and then cut through. This is not civilization. Oh. You keep your sons, wife, daughters, cows, dogs, their animals, asses, domestic and horses, elephants. If you are rich, you can keep elephants also. It does not mean either family-wise or state-wise. It does not mean that you give protection to some members and cut throat of the earth. Oh, how horrible it is. So all of them were present now. And the problem is that he has to kill them. Or it is fight. It is a family fight. So some of the family members on the other side and some of the family members this side. So other side also what are they? The Tatlapasat Sitan Partha Pitrin of Pitamahan. Pitrin teachers and Pitrin also. Pitrin means those who are on the status of father. And Bhishma Dev was a grandfather, a real grandfather. Pitamaha. He is on the other side. Turnacharya. He is on the other side, teacher. They have to be respected. Actually, Arjun did so before fighting with Dhrunacharya. He first of all threw one arrow on his lotus feet of essences. This is the etiquette. My dear sir, you have taught me this fighting science. Now it is being used against you. Duty. So I offer my obeisances. And Dunacharya also threw another arrow touching his head. My dear boy, become blessed. This is duty. How blessed? By killing me. Uh, I know you will kill me. So I give you blessings that you kill me. This is duty. Uh, the disciple he is fighting, touching the feet of Donacharya. My dear sir, it is duty. Now you are face to face to fight. So give me your blessing. This is one side. The other side, blessing. Yes, you are my all blessings. So this is the problem. 
this material world is problematic, especially when we have got this family relationship. Society, friendship and love divinely bestowed upon man. They say. <laughs> it is not divinely bestowed. It is not. It is entanglement. Oh. It is entanglement. Greha oh. huh? oh. There is verse in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavad. Dhyaha hmm. patta. What is that verse? Dhyaha uh, patta kalatradi. Dhyaha, first affection is with our body. I am this, Mr. Second Sense. This is I am, this body. I have got attraction for this body. Uh, then, the offsprings, the byproducts of this body. Apatya. Apatya means children. Uh, and how this byproduct is made? Kalatra, through I. Stri. Stri means which expands. Vista uh, uh, expands. I am alone. I accept wife, Sri, and with her cooperation I expand. So one who helps me to expand, that is called Sri. Every Sanskrit word has got meaning. Why woman is called Sri? Because she helps expanding myself. How expanding? Deha patta kalatradi I get my children. First of all, I was affectionate to my body. Then, as soon as I get a wife, I become affectionate to her. Then, as soon as I get children, I become affectionate to children. In this way, I expand my affection for this material world. This material world, attachment, it is not required. It is a foreign thing. Uh, this material body is foreign. I am spiritual. I am spiritual. Aham Brahmasmi. But because I wanted to lord it over the material nature, Krishna has given me this body. Daivanatrena. He is giving you body. He is giving the body of Brahma. He is giving you the body of ant as you desire. As you desire. Uh. If you want the body of a tiger, Krishna will give you. If you want the body of a hog, he will give you. If you want the body of Brahma, he will give you. If you want the body of a demigod, he will give you. If you want the body of American, he will give you. Englishman, he will give you. Indian, he will give you. That is Krishna. He is so kind. Jejathamang prapaddhanti tang tathayu bhajam yaham. Uh, Krishna is very kind. Uh, just like a son disobedient to the father, but he wants to enjoy something. Still father giving him. All right, he take money and enjoy. Father is so kind. You become free, whatever you like and do, you take some money. This is our concession. This material life is a concession to us, given by God, for gratifying our senses. This is material life. Krishna does not want that you become entangled in this material world. That he doesn't want. Why he should want? Krishna, just like you produce your sons, children, why? to remain in household life, enjoy in the company of wife, children, friends. This is, one can understand. Why I take so much responsibility of family? I was alone. Why I get married? Why I beget children? Why I make friends? Because I want to enjoy. 
So Krishna is also a person. Nitya Nityanam Chitana Sritanam. He has produced so many children, these living entities. Why? To enjoy along with them. Just try to understand the psychology. Jato Bhaimani Bhutani Jayanti. Janmardasya Jata. Where this idea came from, that I shall be happy within uh, society, friendship and love, children. What, where from this idea came? Where is the origin? The origin is there in Krishna. Janmardasya Jata. Uh, Janmardasya Jata. Uh, the origin of love. Uh, just like Krishna is loving, Radhara. So the loving idea came from Krishna. Anything that is that is within our experience, that is in Krishna. So Krishna cannot be impersonal. That is nonsense. Krishna is exactly a person like me, you. But the difference is that is very, very unlimitedly powerful. I am limited. This is the difference. So Krishna also wants uh, that uh, to live with his family. Our Krishna consciousness movement is just to train ourselves again to enter into the family of Krishna. This is our movement. Uh, with these families, the so-called families, we are suffering. Uh, we are suffering. But this family idea is there. That is perfect in Krishna, with Krishna. The family idea, what from this family idea comes? Without it is being situated in Krishna. Because nothing can be visible without being in Krishna. He is the origin. Janmadrasya jata. Aham sarvasya prabhava. I am the origin of everything. So, Whatever we are seeing in this material world, the origin is in Krishna. But here it is parvate. That is the only difference. Just like a tree, the original tree is standing erect. But when you see the parvate reflection of the tree, everything is stopped. Eternally. The upside has gone down. We have seen the reflection. Uh, of the tree. So the upside down sign, when the upside of the tree becomes down sign, that is called parvate reflection. So this material world is parvate reflection of the spiritual world. Uh, <coughs> it is false in this sense because it is reflection. Uh, otherwise, Exactly the same thing are there in the spiritual world. Urdham ulam madho sakha asattham abhyam vidu. There is in the Bhagavad Gita, I will find in the 15th chapter. Urdham ulam. Here, this material world, the origin, mulam means root, is upside. Upside. Because it is reflection. This tree is erect and this is reflection. So the root has gone upside. So here is the problem. Because we are attached to our, this so-called family, uh, society, friendship, and love, when Arjuna was faced, uh, then he became kripaya paraya vishta visidan idam abravit. How it is possible, uh, Krishna, that I have to kill the other side? Uh, my fathers, my father-in-law, my grandfather, my sons, my grandsons, my brother, my so many friends. So it is natural. Kripaya, paraya, avisht. He becomes overwhelmed with compassion. Kripaya, paraya, avishta, visidam. Very morosely. Oh, Krishna, I'll have to fight with them, I have to kill them. Why this consciousness came? The other side also, Durjodha. Why? 
He did not think in that way. Why? Arjun is thinking. Because he is devotee. That is the difference. A devotee thinks like that. A devotee does not like to kill anyone, even an ant. Why he should be encouraged to kill his friends? Uh, a devotee is like that. Dasyasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana sarvai gunai tatra samasate sura. This is the result of devotional life. Arjuna was insulted, Arjuna was taken away, all his belongings, Arjuna was banished for thirteen years, his wife was insulted, uh, so many atrocities was done to him. Still, when the question of killing came, he was not very happy. No. This is Vaishnava. This is Vaishnava. He is ready to excuse even the greatest enemy. Uh, but Krishna does not want. If you insult his devotee, the devotee may excuse, but Krishna will not excuse. This is Krishna's position. Therefore, be careful to insult a devotee. A devotee may excuse you, but Krishna will not excuse you. Oh. Krishna is so strict. He cannot tolerate any insult to his devotee. Oh. Therefore, this arrangement of fighting. Uh, Arjuna wanted, no, let them be excused. Krishna wanted, no, you must fight. You must kill them. This is the position. Uh, so he is within the dilemma. Krishna is insisting that you must fight and kill them. But he is thinking, how shall I kill my kinsman? Uh, this is the problem. Therefore, all friends are there. So this is one sign that if you want to please Krishna, then you have to be prepared for killing your so-called relatives. If you want Krishna, if you want to please Krishna. Uh, so this whole Vedic civilization is made just to train how you can be detached from this so-called family affection. This is Vedic training. Uh, first of all, brahmachari. Brahmachari means uh, to lead the life of austerity. Uh, a brahmachari is uh, supposed to live, uh, to serve the spiritual master at his home, and he has to work just like a menial. Uh, he may be a uh, king's son or a very great brahmin son, but as soon as he agrees to live with the spiritual master, he has to live just like a menial servant. Uh, whatever the spiritual master will order, he has to do it. Uh, this is Brahmacharya. And they would gladly do because their children, uh, Brahmacharya life begins from five years. So you ask any ch- child to anything, he will do. Mm. They are learned. They are given education. Go from door to door, house to house, and bring some arms. So Brahmacharya means the neighborhood, their sons. So when the brahmacari goes for begging, Mother, give me something, arms, immediately, some rice, some dal, some atta is given, or some vegetables, sometimes some money. So they bring everything to the spiritual master, and it becomes the property of the spiritual master. Because he has begged, it is not his property. Sarvasam Guruvida, everything is Guru's property. So much so that after cooking everything, the spiritual master will call, my dear boys, come on, take prasada. But if he forgets to call somebody, he will not touch. He will not touch. 
This is Brahmachari. Oh, spiritual master has not called me, so I will fast. <laughs> he baked the rice and vegetables and atta and dal. It is cooked. And when it is cooked, that is also spiritual master property. If the spiritual master does not ask him to take, he cannot take. He cannot touch. This is Brahmachari life. So therefore the first training is given to become austere, tolerate, how to tolerate, how to call other women as mother. He is learning from the beginning, a small child. He is trained up to call any woman, even of his own age, not sister, mother. This is the training. Matribat paradareshu. This is education. Matribat paradareshu. Chanaka Pandi, the great politician, has given the definition of a learned scholar. Who is learned scholar? He has given the definition. What is this? Matribat paradareshu. To see every woman except his wife as mother. This is education. This is education, perfection of education, when you can see all women except your wife as mother. This is education. Matribat paradareshu, paradarveshu nasrava. And others' property, just like garbage in the street. Then nobody is interested in the garbage. You throw. And that is education. And atavat sarvabhuteshu, and thinking all living entities as your own self. If you feel pains and pleasure by something, you could not afflict the pains and pains to others. If your throat is cut, if your head is cut, you feel so much pain, how you can cut the head of another animal? This is education. Samasarvesu bhuteshu. This is education. Three things. This is the test of education. Matribat paradareshu, paradarbeshu, loshrabat, atavat sarvabhuteshu, japasyati sa pandita. Where is? Where is that pandit? Uh, there is no such thing now. Hmm. So, uh, this problem, attachment for this material world, uh, gradually we have to cut it. That is the Vedic civilization. If you want to go back to home, back to Godhead, then at the same time, if you remain attached to this material world, so-called society, fancy by love, then it is not possible. So long you will have a pinch of attraction with this material world. <coughs> there is no possibility of being transferred to the spiritual world. This is the position. Therefore, by training, by education, we have to become detached. Detached. This society friends my love. We have to understand the falsity of this so called society friends my love. It is just like because we are being carried away by the waves of Maya. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has sung, Mayara vasi jatcha bhese khatcha habu dubu bhat. Just like we see sometimes in rainy season, so many plants and creepers and vegetables and so many other things are floating in the river going. Similarly, we also are all floating in the waves of Maya. Mayar vasi jatcha vasi. Katcha avudu, sometimes drown, sometimes on the surface, sometimes on the other shore, sometimes in this shore. This is going on. So long we are in this material world, we are being tossed by different currents, and sometimes I am here as the master of some kingdom, and sometimes I am dog of somebody else. This is my position. The same thing, very good example. That we are being carried by the waves of Maya. Sometimes we are gathering together, 
so many straws and vegetables are gathered together. And sometimes the same vegetables and straws are thrown asunder. Uh, one is there, one is here. So here also, we assemble here uh, as society, friendship, or love, exactly like that, uh, in the waves of Maya. You know, nobody is your father, nobody is your mother, nobody is your sister, nobody. It is simply uh, my illusory combination. Illusory combination, temporary combination, and we are so much attached to this combination that we are refusing to go back to home, back to home. This is all. Therefore, we have to meet them in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and if required, we have to kill them and execute the order of Krishna. This is our point. If you are thinking that in this material existence I shall be saved, assisted by my society, friendship, law, country, and politics, and sociology, no, no, sir, it is not possible. It's not possible. You have to take care of yourself. Your so-called society, friendship, love, country, nation, and this will never you will be able to help you because you are under the clutches of Maya. They will jisa guna mai mama Maya durutya prakite kramaani guna ikramaani sarvasa ahankar vimuratma katta ham miti mannate. You are under the clutches of Maya. You have no independence. Neither anyone has got any independence to save you. That's not possible. The same example as I gave some time, that you learn how to drive aeroplane. So you go high in the sky, but if you are in danger, no other aeroplane can help you. You are finished. Therefore you must be a very careful pilot to take care of yourself. Similarly, in this material world, everyone individually has to take care of himself, how he can be saved from the clutches of Maya. That is Krishna consciousness movement. A teacher can give you hints, uh, the acharya can give you hints that you can be saved in this way. But the execution of the duties, that is in your head. Uh, if you perform the spiritual duties rightly, then you are saved. Otherwise, even Acharya gives you instruction. If you don't follow, so how he can save you? He can save you by instruction, by his mercy, as much as possible. But you have to take it in your hand seriously. So this problem is, uh, Arjun is facing now this problem, uh, that is general problem, dehapatta kalatradishu. Uh, dehapatta, deha means this body. Apatta means children, kalatra means wife. Dehapatta kalatradishu. Atma sannesu asasu api. We are thinking that we shall be protected by my these soldiers. Uh, I have got my sons, grandsons, my grandfather, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, my so many society friends. Everyone is thinking that. My nation, my community, uh, my philosophy, my politics. No. Nothing can say. The hapatra kalatra disu, asasu opi. They are all temporary. Uh, they come and go. Asasu api pramatya tasya nidhalam pasyanna pina pasyati. One who is too much attached to this society, friendship and love, he is pramatya. Pramatya means crazy, mad man. Pasyanna pina tasya nidhalam. He does not see, although he is seeing that my father has died. When I was a child, my father was giving me protection. Now my father has gone away. Who is giving me protection? Is my father alive to give me protection? Who is giving me protection? My mother was giving me protection. Now he is giving me protection. 
I was in family, eh? my sons, my daughters, my wife. I left them. Now he is giving me protection. I, actually, Krishna gives you protection always. Not your society, friends, your love. They will be finished. Thank you very much.